<laughs> this guy's toast. We have quite the surprise for you. We have Disguised Toast on stream playing against Jolly and see if Jolly can take out uh, Disguised Toast, who's been on a rampage lately. Mm-hmm. There's the Moonfire, so it does oh, appear I to be the combo. Oh, strategy. I knew it. And what is going on with the call and the finishers? Oh, we got some Murloc. The shaman. Uh, it's the Murloc Dragon Shaman. He's been inspired by Brian Kibler. <laughs> Holy smokes. Something <laughs> wacky is about to unfold here. We have two tier four decks battling it out. Oh, man. He's got the Living Roots he can come out, too. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh... What is this coin doing here? Oh, Toast it's, is, oh, it, is a that he discount living roots. For... <laughs> okay. Actually, living roots is negative one because it charged twice from Emperor Thor's in. Uh, yeah. Toast kind of forgot. Yeah. But you know what? This is how good of a guy Toast is. He's trying to misplay so that way he can offset Jolly's misplay and put them in the same boat together. Sure. What yeah, a... we can go with that. What a bro. He's oh, holding back goodness. for more value? <laughs> <laughs> tier 4 decks, tier 4 players, Fireman. <laughs> it, it, it's give your minions plus 2, plus 2, right? So it, it affects also the non-Murlocs. So the Bookworm would have been buffed as well there. That Bookworm could have gotten plus 4, plus 4 that turn. Oh! But uh, he All would have right. died anyway. So. It wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. It wouldn't have mattered. It's, uh... The Moonfire was used last turn, so he needs to find the Living Roots Yo. for lethal now. What if he yogs for the lethal? Because he's, he's six off right now, or five off. Well, I he's mean, got... he's just like one Mind Blast away, right? From winning. <laughs> so the second Living Roots is... Oh, he's, he's, he's such a troll, dude. He's such a troll. He's not going to do it. For the fans, Toast. For the fans. For the fans. Yes, he's gonna do it. You know, he's gonna do it. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's pretty crazy. This is he amazing. Could... Toast is the man of the people. Oh, I told you, it. one mind blast is all he needs. <laughs> Suck it, Firebit. I have sucked it. <laughs> I didn't think he was gonna do it. Scientists are baffled everywhere. Too bad. Too bad it can't happen, but it's fine. Uh, Toast is going to coast to a 2-0 victory so far. And uh, right now, he just needs to win one more game and he'll officially move on to round number two. That's been uh, what's been typical of the tournament thus far. So that's been okay. the tournament metagame we've expected to see. In you were the chosen one! It was said that you would destroy this and not join them! All you needed to do was try to not be dead, and it looks like Toast is going to wrap up the series 3-0. Oh, a guy that looked like Toast before he put on that weird bread mask. I don't know who it is anymore. Yeah, who is that guy? <laughs> yeah, it's all mysterious. So a little bit of a fun series for you guys, 3-0 for Disguised Toast. Hey guys, welcome back to the Hearthstone Heroes of Warcraft Major. I am Firebat casting with Froden, and we are bringing you a very exciting match. It is the Losers Round 4, so these players, one of these two, probably favorites to go very deep in this tournament, uh, one of these two is going to have to be going, going home after this. It's either going to be Show, or it's either going to be Toast, Toast bringing a very interesting lineup. We saw earlier on in the tournament him take some games with his Anything Can Happen Paladin and his Malagosi Yogg Druid. And we didn't get to see the Warlock. He was banned. And we saw the Pirate Warrior, though. And we haven't seen Sho yet, but I, I expect Sho to be playing more of a typical lineup. He usually plays the standard, you know, lists. He's usually playing, you know, Jade Druid. I'm not sure if it's going to be Water Rogue or Miracle Rogue. And then I'm imagining Reno Lock from him. Who do you think is going to come out on top in this one? Uh, got to give it the the nod to to show, but I got to say, as much as I think show's favorite, I would love Toast to win. Interesting lineup. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, we'll see. He's got. Oh wait, wait. I I knew it. I knew it. Day number one, very bad. I was like, because we we saw Toast on stream. 
but his warlock was banned. And I said, I think he's playing his Medivh the Guardian Warlock deck, or as he likes to call it, Meme Lock. Yeah. And you were like, ah, maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> and it turns out it is, dude. It's all totally right. that deck. You see it on stream all the time. And the, the big question becomes, does show know what's in store? Because I'm pretty sure show doesn't watch Toast stream. He, I don't think he's going to know what hit him, man. Uh, Toast, this is the deck that he used to climb to top 100. Okay, cool. So it's yeah. it's not it's not completely unplayable. Sure. There's Look at that! He's got Doom! I mean, it synergizes great with You're not going to play around that far, <laughs> uh, Alright, okay. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, see? Oh, he's got see? Sack oh, I told you, dude! He has a Sacrificial Pact. He's ready. <laughs> Because uh, uh, I don't see that much Reno Warlock these days. So, see, what? even if everything goes well, Sh Show will not know what hit him if he plays Jaraxxus. I guess not. <laughs> you might want to get... Uh, wait, how does the interaction with Twisting and Etiesh work? I assume it creates the minion after? Yeah, pretty yes. sure it does. So I you want to use... Tested this enough. Oh, he's going just straight up for the A because he can get Tyrion or Ragnaros. Mm -hmm. Or Chromagus? Yeah, it's a... which is pretty nice. If it was a six mana, six seven that dealt eight damage. The, call of <laughs> the ancient harbinger, or you get the faceless, you get the behemoth that's like a ten ten for ten. Ooh, low roll. It's one of the worst ones you can get, huh? Show needs to find you know Reno Jackson and start healing himself back up. And there's the Draxus. Oh boy. The lose the game play. Even though most of the time. And 99.999 repeating, of course, percentage of the time, it's the correct play. And it doesn't lose you the game. It, it will. Yeah, because you see all this stuff coming out from Toast Deck and you think. Surely there's no combo, so I'm safe if I play Jirax this round. <laughs> he's, he's trying to beat him! He's trying to beat him! Look at this beat! And show Sho's gonna take the break! Oh, he's picking it up. He's feeling it out. He sees the carrot! It's dangling! Oh, and he's dead. No! <laughs> Sho! Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at that toast with his banana grin. Oh! He did. Wow! <laughs> Not created from Cabal Courier, and it's straight up in Toast deck. And that is how you know Show is not a disguised Toast sub. Mm -hmm. That's how you get the fans, man. That's how you get the fans. A lot of the players, they always wonder, you know, I'm always on stream, I'm always playing, I'm always grinding, but no one pays attention to me. Baby Rage. Well, think guys like Toast, they know how to impress, man. He's definitely a showman. I feel for Show, man. That's all I'm saying. You get this terrible rogue draw, the other guy's smiling, jumping up and down, making faces. Well, I, I got, I'll, I'll, go to, I'll go I'll take the other side here, Firebat. I think Hearthstone right. players could use some showmanship instead of, uh, you know, lifeless reactions. Yeah, with, yeah. With the same decks all there's, the time, over and over and over. There's definitely two sides to it, for sure. There's the... Uh, but you still, you got to feel for Shaw a little bit. Come on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that sympathy. was a terrible hand. That yeah. was awful. <laughs> of course I feel bad for Shaw. He didn't even get to play the game. Yeah, you're sitting there hurting the whole time, man. That, uh, that was the equivalent of getting, you know, uh, mana screwed or mana flooded. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you just got nothing to do. Yeah. So, but of course, that's terrible. But there's it's like a light at the end of the tunnel here, right? He's got to play against Paladin now. So he's got <laughs> some amount of home. <laughs> It's his turn. Show didn't even have a bad hand this game. Paladin didn't have Finja. Didn't have Finja. It's, it's just true silver champion. Just yeah. very efficient at removing things. 
The True Silver's a, a pretty good card. Flies under the radar a little bit, but... Whew, nice card. Yeah, I guess maybe to Constructed players. Arena players, of course, uh, know the, the fear of True Silver Champion. That card's ridiculous. But this game's not over yet. We'll, we'll see okay. uh, what ends up happening. And, and Show, because he doesn't have Questing Adventures, he's, he replaced it with Bob Teacher and the Red Mana Worm. He's going to have to have this Van Cleef do a lot of work. He's seen one Peacekeeper, two Equality. So maybe this Van Cleef sticks. Yeah. Yeah. This would be pretty sick. How many Murlocs have died? Uh, one Blue Go, I believe. Okay. So yeah, Ventos doesn't have Lethal with the Anything. So this Edwin might just be enough to take him there. It's pretty big. He could get the, the two Murlocs, though. He can get a, a Bluegill Warrior and a Murloc War Leader, and then just lethal him, because he's got four damage in hand right now. 16-16 mm -hmm. Van Cleave. So, oh! If he picks up... Uh, oh, no, it's too it's too much mana. Yeah, he Vigil can possible. Consecrate, then Solemn Vigil, and then find the uh, Bluegill Warrior. Oh, right, right. But then you shut off the ability to Elder Peacekeeper, the Edwin, if you just don't solve Vigil first. How many yeah, cards yep. remain in the deck? Maybe you have to play the odds here. There's one Eldor Peacekeeper left because we've already seen one. One Bluegill right. left. One, uh, and then the, the Bluegill needs to come with the War Leader specifically. He's solemn Vigiling first, so he's got three cards that we can target. Sorry, four out of the 12. No, doesn't look. It's not like. it. But he can consecrate, and then is that, is that? I think that's lethal, right? Because he's got the twenty right there, mm -hmm. plus he's the Leroy. Wow, show exactly. Uh, Thirty-one. Thirty-one. <laughs> yeah. Thirty-one exactly. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Man, that was Joe close. He's alive. I thought he was out of it, but he's able to just barely clench it in the end. As a way to stick with it, right? Like, uh, I was casting it and I was feeling Ooh. demoralized. So. Wait, something we didn't pay attention to was he was on fatigue and he had to take a fatigue damage. Mm -hmm. If he had one more damage attached to him, he actually uh, would not be able to eviscerate for that lethal. Or it would be a tie. Oh man, what a crazy game. <laughs> that was nuts. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'd say it's slightly J Druid favored, but it's no it's nowhere near like a super favored matchup or anything like that. It's definitely I'd say, you know, 45, 55 range, somewhere like that. Uh, Paladins oftentimes, you know, people meme about Paladin being underrepresented, but it's actually got some pretty well rounded matchups. Toast has a couple options here on how he wants to do it. He's gonna go for the pressure play. Interesting. All right. And because it, it seems like he's trying to really force Show's hand because so Show set up for a six mana play. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, if he does, hopefully it, it, for him, he, he's trying to complicate combat math a little bit. Yeah, sets up for a really clean consecrate too. Gets a bunch of extra chip damage in, and then he can get the solemn vigil out. Played perfectly against the Jade Behemoth that he was expecting Sho to play when Sho ramped to six. So yeah, well executed by Toast there, reading into what Sho was doing and setting up a way to punish him for it. Possibly put out under the board. It's a huge board swing, and it charges up your second anything that can happen to be an even bigger board swing. So you get whatever percent chance, depending on how many cards you have left, to just kind of win the game instantly on the next turn. So yeah, whenever you can play anything and not die, usually you go for it. That's definitely enough pressure. Toast has another stall, though. Toast has the straight-up forbidden the healing, lethal. and he gets the anything can happen, which is pretty much guaranteed lethal. Mm -hmm. Just take the trade with the minion, so mm -hmm. that you can't get, like, weird two finja, four war leaders, one no blue gills sort of thing going on. He's done it. He's absolutely done it. He's taken the series three to one and sends show packing. Stays alive in the tournament. Toast is the winner against Liquid Show. He's going up through round, loser's round number five. His reward for beating Toast or beating Show is that he has to go up against WTY Bill, <laughs> the top eight finisher from the Winter Championships of America last year. Let's first meet WTY Bill. 
All right. Built, very popular streamer in the Eastern scene. Not as, as well known before this tournament on the Western side of things, but starting to make his, his impact known. Lost the first round in the Master vs. Apprentice style matchup against Al Sky High, but is looking to make a comeback now in the lower bracket. Welcome, everybody, to what should be the last series of the day. We have a bonus match for you guys because, well, we all know you guys love Toast. And, well, they also told us that we were, we're streaming one more round here because they, the bracket needs to catch up. So we're just going to keep Toast on there for simplicity reasons. Uh, easier than having another player log in and get all his details and, like, make sure the spectator feature works. <clears throat> so we keep him Toast there right in his spot. And then we'll have WTY Bill. Uh, coming up on stream, your reward is that they're playing six different classes. Diversity. So there Pretty we go. Cool. Yeah. Well, among this diversity, though, uh, we do notice there is no uh, Reno lock in the lineup of WTY Bill or Reno decks or control decks at all. So with no control decks for Toast lineup to prey on, we uh, may find it more difficult than against Show. But we did actually see him able to... Get a couple of wins against Rogue. So even though he's got very creative and unique deck lists and the strategy of targeting slower control decks with his combo decks, apparently they also work pretty well against Rogue. So uh, there's still definitely hope. They seem to be just okay deck lists on standalone principle. It's kind of like we mentioned, you know, the aggro Rogue is completely different kind of animal than Miracle Rogue. Yeah. Mm, turn four. Holy smokes. Argent Squire. The Dragon Priest is a little bit slower, but it's is it slow enough? It still comes out to a very quick start, and that kind of early game curve from WYTY Bill with Nether Space Historian to fill in the gaps can also be tough for Drew to deal with. I think we got an all-star match here again. Look at this. The curve of Toast is also uh, insane. He's already even got Artie Malagos in hand, and against Priest, you can just drop Malagos on the field. If you're not like if you're kind of even on board, they don't generally run in tubes, so it's going to be very difficult for them to beat it. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see that have uh, happen a little bit later down the road. This is the dream from Toast, man. Okay, okay. He wants to save Innervate for a bet for a draw with Gadget Sand because his mm -hmm. hand feels kind of loose. Yeah, but it's not like his opponent discovered Mulch or something, unless he has naturalized in his deck. Those aren't gonna cut it. That uh, chill mall, maybe? Ah, uh, probably gotta be Deathwing Dragon Lord or something, so you get a big dude to just threaten him. How do you win the game? They have to have nothing. They have to not go avionic gadget, innervate, innervate, draw their entire deck, kill you. <laughs> I mean, you didn't even need the Aviana either, but it's pretty sweet. It is pretty sweet. You can get Azure Drake for a one mana cycle too. You can play both gadgets out and then draw oh, literally your entire deck. Wow. He's gonna find Coon too. That's the, the crazy part. And that's gonna cost one mana too. This it's turn like... is gonna be nuts. Yeah. He's playing faster than the observer can keep up with him. He's actually kind of like in danger of fatiguing himself to death. <laughs> well, you know the saying is you never go full gadget saying. I guess for one time, for one game, it was it's definitely the right thing to do. Kuhn was like in the bottom five cards of his deck, able to find it. And uh, looks like that's going to wrap up the, the game here. And we have a tied score one to one. And that is that is Toast's favorite deck, I think. I mean, okay. I think he's very partial to his Warlock, but out of all the decks, I I, cause I tune in to watch Toast stream every now and then. And it's like he's always playing this kind of deck. Anything that involves Avian and Kuhn. Good sequencing there. Mm -hmm. So you don't waste ATS charges. Yeah, it, it's just he's he's very familiar with how all these small nuances. It's really easy to mess up stuff like that because you're just rushing and you just kind of get excited to do it. But you can see how familiar oh. he is. <laughs> wow! All right, all right. The shaman's uh, coming back. That was 
That had to be. Oh, the dream is dead. Yeah. Back like it the, up. The most favorable Instant sequence. Casino toast. It's not worth it anymore. <laughs> Next game. Nice play here, Pistol Enforcer, healing back your Twilight Drake. Your opponent used both of the hexes. Can see he comes out from WTY Bill, and Toast is one game away from guaranteeing himself top 32. And top 32 has got a lot of killers as well, you know? It's, it's Every time we go one round deeper, I'm really impressed by a list of players that we have. Shaman queuing back up against the Paladin. The Shaman versus Paladin, how do you feel this matchup usually goes? Um, Shaman versus Paladin. Uh, I gotta say that I feel like Shaman's. Uh, if Paladin doesn't know what they're doing, Shaman's really favored. But if Paladin knows what they're doing, then Shaman's slightly favored. Okay. Because if Paladin doesn't know what they're doing, they walk into really bad devolves and hexes and stuff. But if Paladin knows what to do, then they conserve the resources, make sure Paladin just like deal with the board, and then uh, ensure that their Murlocs die for the anything combos. That's. <laughs> yeah. That, that is really, really close. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Unless Murloc Knight comes out of Finja. Okay, that could happen. Flame <laughs> Reef Faceless. That's oh. gonna give him a chance. Alright, that's all. That's all gonna, that's gonna be all she wrote here. Sorry, I'm kind of struggling over the words as we wrap up uh, game four. We're going to the game number five, and we'll have one more chance for either of these guys to go in. Remember, this is losers round five. The person that wins moves on and lives to tell another tale for day three, but the loser drops out here in the round of 48. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, Priest versus Paladin, and if there's a, a matchup that Paladin does all right in it, a lot of people would say that it's uh, against Dragon Priest. Gonna pull out the remaining two Murlocs in his deck. And just so gross, You're man. I'm gonna die. Oh yeah, they're sticking around and forcing your opponent to spend their entire turn and all of their mana removing it, and then uh, you reload. Yep. You didn't have very much reload though, but uh, still, like the, the thing here is, Dragon Priest is supposed to be trying to kill you before you <laughs> you get to your combos, and uh, Toast just drew two cards and forced the entire the entire turn of the opponents to just be passed, basically. Yeah. If they have the best possible answer, that's how powerful Finja is, man. Yep. Dragon Fire Potion going to instantly be played here. Not even a turn to hesitate. And uh, that leaves Toast with the ability to start drawing with Solemn Vigil. Doesn't get the value at all his turn, but... Looks like Toast's gonna have to clear this. Sets up a Doomsayer to stop his opponent. If uh, WTY Bill picks up Shadowware Pain, he can start developing on his own board. Forcing Toast to be in a defensive position for the rest of the game. So this Doomsayer activating is huge if Toast wants to survive. WTY Bill picks up Holy Nova. That's not going to be it. He tries to just discover with the operative. He doesn't find it anything, though. Oh, man. That is, that's a huge moment. Because that's kind of what Priest is predicated on. Being able to use anything with operative. And try to uh, kill their opponent right back. Yeah. Not going to be able to do it. He still has another operative in the deck, so if he finds a second operative, he can still have the chance of discovering the anything, but not on this one. Stats on stats on stats. Oh, the second equality picked up here for Toast. That's huge. He's not intimidated, though. He picks up Consecration! Oh, my. Wow. That's disgusting. Oh, my goodness. Trying to get deeper into his uh, into his en his deck so he can get anything can happen, and also healing back up to fourteen like he said. But his entire board now just dies. I don't think he cares as long as he draws the anythings. Establishes a huge board presence. He knows he's safe against uh, Brand Blackwing Corruptor because that's only. Nine damage for his opponent has. It's, it's looking pretty close to, to being it here, Firebet. 
At a uh, extremely reduced cost next turn. Oh, wait. I think he's got lethal right now. He's got the, oh, yeah. the truth over champion and the consecration. And Toast is going to advance to day three. Taking out WTY Bill, a top eight finisher from the America's Winter Championship. Job well done. He's going to the top 32 now. Wow. That's pretty impressive considering how stacked the tournament is. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. <laughs> Lights out.